OK. Brilliant. So welcome everybody to the talk. Yeah. Um, this is Grace, Grace Morgan, our former head girl who's currently studying civil engineering at Cardiff. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about um, her journey from RADA to Cardiff Uni to do civil engineering and why she decided civil engineering was right for her. And also, um, you know, the different types of engineering that um, she was um, considering before. So I've just got a few people in the lobby, which I will look at. I'll admit them in a second. They've come up, but I don't. There we are. So I think I might have admitted everybody, so that's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the screen now. I'm going to hand over to Grace. OK, so I think everyone should be able to see the screen. Um, Grace, you can see it OK? Yep, I can see it OK. Brilliant. Um, can someone else talk to me that they see the screen so it's not just me and Grace? We can see the screen, sir. Perfect. Brilliant. OK, over to you, Grace. OK, fab. So, Doctor, if you go to the next slide. <laughs> OK. OK, can you so, see that? As Dr. Drew said, I'm, yeah, I can see that. As Dr. Drew said, I'm Grace. Um, I'm not sure if, you guys, if some of you guys would actually remember me or know me, um, but obviously I finished around two years ago now. I am studying civil and environmental engineering at Cardiff, and with my degree, I'm also, I've opted in for UN industry, which will mean I'll be able to go into the world of work uh, this time next year to do a whole year with the company, fingers crossed, if I can get a placement. And um, in, my, in school, I studied geography, maths, chemistry, and Welsh back. Um, I started with biology as well, but I didn't last very long. I kind of knew it wasn't for me. Um, and I also said I put on here that um, I do athletics to quite a high standard. And for me, it was really important when applying to university that I was able to continue doing my athletics um, with a you know a good training setup and. In like a high performance environment if if that make if that makes sense to you guys so it was quite difficult in a way trying to find the right university that had the right course for me and the right um degree but i made it and here i am so can you uh, next slide please sorry grace i'll do it now no that's right. fine yeah it's a little it's not as um i'm pressing and it's not turning over no no it's turned over OK. <laughs> um, oh. How's the, oh, there you go. So I really didn't know what I wanted to do until sixth form. Um, I think, to, you know, the, the year 11's on here at the moment. I even in the year 12, so I really don't panic about it all. Um, I remember I picked my subjects because I loved them and I really enjoyed them. And the last thing I wanted to do from sixth form was do subjects I didn't enjoy and it would almost feel like a chore going to the lessons every day. So. I think I got to about January in year 12 and I was like okay just you know, think of a few options and I really love geography and maths in school but I really didn't know what I wanted to do with them um I kind of didn't want to do geography degree I feel like it wouldn't really be my style and, was, and I wouldn't really know like what to do afterwards um so I kind of naturally fell into STEM which stands for science technology engineering and maths which kind of in a way falls into the obviously maths and geography to a certain extent and then from there, I kind of just, you know, explored kind of fun engineering. But one of the main things things really helped me is that there's a big push for STEM at the moment, generally. And Loughborough Uni offered this like STEM day in, in January of year 12. So I went up with my mum. We were able to go to loads of different like taster sessions, different aspects of STEM. So there's some maths ones, there was different types of engineering, there was one or two kind of like more tech based things. And then from there, I kind of saw kind of which aspects kind of suited me more, which I didn't. I really didn't like materials at all. <laughs> um, it was quite funny, but yeah. And then with that as well, I kind of knew I didn't want to have been in office, um, office job all the time. Engineering, if you guys um, do or don't know, there's different types. So you can be on site in with a contracting company. You've seen the photo at the top here. I'm doing some surveying, which is obviously very hands on. And then offsite work, which is kind of coming more office based, which is consulting. So, kind of the beginning of projects. So, you can kind have of designing, 
talking to the clients. So it was kind of varied. Um, and that really, um, that really suited me. So again, I wasn't really sure I wanted to do. So I attended a lot of open days. I think I actually went to Cardiff Uni Open Day three times, not just for engineering. I looked in, I looked in loads of different courses and and then in a way I kind of was like, oh, geography, not really feeling. And then I went to the civil engineering and it just kind of like clicked with me. I sat there and I was like, oh, like I, can, I could be interested in this. And something I actually really recommend is going to open days locally, even if you guys don't want to go to Cardiff or Swans, your university is close by, having it on your doorstep to kind of experience an open day and hear what the course is like in different universities, I think is actually really, ben really beneficial. So that's something I would say that I would really recommend doing. So kind of like why civil? Um, I didn't take physics for, for my A-level, so that kind of limited me to a certain extent but what engineering principles I could do. I didn't really fancy the idea of like mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. Um, while civil, because it was kind of, it's like the whole built environment, but so people don't know civil engineering. I kind of say it's everything you look around, a civil engineer probably has some sort of input in. So, you know, you've got your bridges, roads, uh, transportation to a certain extent, there's water, um, you know, all buildings, civil engineers, all of like a quite big input with these. So, and I kind of really like that. And like the broadness means there's so much that I could eventually go into further along in my career pathway. You can change slide, please. <laughs> so that should have changed now, Grace. So when I applied, yeah, I got it. When I applied to university, I actually applied for three different courses. Um, in Cardiff, I applied for civil and environmental engineering. In Loughborough, Birmingham and Bath, I applied for just civil engineering. And in Brunel, I applied for um, civil engineering and sustainability. So, because I, I still love geography and the, like, the sustainability element, seeing that Cardiff and Brunel had those courses, like I really like, warmed to that. And as well, all five of those universities have really strong um, sporting setups. So I knew that I could get that balance between, you know, um, my degree, which I'd enjoy, and then knowing there was training setup and performance work on there that would really benefit and suit me. So when I was applying, you know, going through UCAS, um, summer of year 12, I had some on-site work experience with a company called Balfour BT which is so much fun and my first kind of taste of engineering. It was daunting, so I didn't know what to expect, but it was really helpful and I really recommend if you guys could get any work experience. I know it's obviously really difficult, um, especially in COVID times, but it really does help and make you understand kind of what you'll be doing in the long term. I also attend an engineering summer school with, with Swans University. And it was advertised through school, actually. I think while students might have got free place at the time, I don't know if it's different anymore, but there was a massive group of us and we were able to taste it with like four or five days, all the engineering types. We did aerospace, civil, mechanical, electrical, um, medical engineering. So loads of different types to, of engineering to try. We were in the labs, we were able to do hands-on activities. You can see from the bottom photo, I'm I'm making a circuit, which is a which is good fun, but I couldn't really see myself doing that for my degree. Um, but yeah, I made loads of great friends, and in a way, made me know civil engineering was like more my thing as well. I actually met two girls on the summer school who are now in the same year as me in Cardiff University doing the same course, which is quite um, it was quite cool to be fair when I found out. But yeah, that was something I really enjoyed. And then one thing I kind of say is. When applying, I think similar for kind of all degrees and all kind of subject areas, try and get as many extracurricular and supercurricular um, activities as possible, because in a way it just gives you more to write about, it gives you more options if you need to write them down, you can. And then with those, um, try and use, you know, the experiences, um, the work experience, your hobbies, your sports, try and re like reflect and relate them to different aspects. So for obviously an engineer, you can Google it online. There's loads of things. You type in like attributes of a good engineer, um, you know, teamwork, innovation, creativity, um, you know, organization, all little things like that. Um, and then you can, it's easy to then draw lines between what 
what um you know what you've done and how it can relate to being an engineer. Can you change slide, please? There we go. There so we here we go, yeah. So reflecting on my first year so far, I think like everybody else, I was very nervous to start. Obviously moving from home, doing something completely different. It's not like you learn engineering school, for instance. And it's also all online because I joined right in the middle of the pandemic, but I absolutely loved it. Um, the course is really varied. So rather than kind of just having lectures and writing essays, engineering is quite varied in terms of I would have, I had a whole module like maths, which is obviously quite hands on. I had a computing module, so we've got coding and looking at the softwares online. I had a really big design module where we would kind of do individual like sketching and drawing online as well as like big group design projects, which is loads of fun. And then the classic engineering ones, you know, like fluids, soils, structures. But it was really varied. I also had a week long field course doing surveying, which normally we would um, go away for a week. But because of COVID, we did in Cardiff, which is actually still loads of fun. We went all around the city and I met loads of more people on my course. Unlike some of my friends who were doing other courses, we were lucky to have quite a bit of in person stuff. So I had labs throughout the year, which is great to kind of you know, get in person, see principles being put into practice. And I know now for my second year, I'm going to I'm going to continue with in labs. And I also have another week long field course, which I think we're down in Devon, which is really exciting in at the end of spring term. But as you can see, um, I'm not going to lie, engineering is a lot of work. You have to be prepared to put in the hours. Some people kind of come to university and think, oh, it'll be fine. You know, one or two lectures a week. But it was very full on to me last year. Obviously, I was trying to balance my sport as, as well. But yeah, it's a lot of work. When you, but once you get into routine and you kind of know what you're doing, it does get easier. I always say to people, if you get through till Christmas, <laughs> you can make it because the first yeah. time is very overwhelming. Um, but I would kind of say it's not as, it's nothing more in terms of like workload and trying to work it all out than kind of studying for three or four A-levels. Um, I'm, I just applied kind of the same principles, make sure I go for the work, I practice, you know, I ask lots of questions if I need to. So it is a step up, but it is manageable. And if I can do it, I feel like anyone can do it. Um, can you change slide, please? So I just want to touch on studying at Cardiff. I know obviously we're all based in Cardiff, but I remember when I applied to Cardiff, I kind of felt like it was like not shamed upon, but people were surprised in a way that obviously I chose to go to Cardiff and I and, and here I am. Um, but I was going to say, please don't be put off going to Cardiff University or any any universities local to, to Cardiff or where you live just because of the distance. I know loads of people and myself, you know, you don't have to go home. I didn't go home a lot really in first term. But then it's so nice having people close by that if you are struggling or if you need some help, you can go home, see family, you know, go for a quick meal, give your parents your washing, save you doing, save you paying for the washing machines. Um, but yeah, I've absolutely loved coming to Garvey University. I lived in Taliban North, so it's the Taliban campus is kind of behind the big Tesco on Western Avenue. And I made loads and loads of good friends. Had this amazing time, especially with obviously very strange circumstances with COVID and lockdowns. But I made the most of it. Everyone, you know, really kind of took advantage of the time we could spend as flats and as um as blocks. And this photo is actually from like my late birthday party. Um, we all dressed up as many of the Pooh characters, and it was so much fun. And it's something I'll always cherish. So I'm really glad I did go to university in COVID year, if that makes sense. Cardiff University has one of the best student unions in the UK. I'm not just saying that. There's there are statistics out there. Um, it is fantastic. There's so much going on all the time, and they've actually at this closing stage of a, of a massive um, bill to extend it, and it looks fantastic. So I can't wait to go there. And I think it should, should be done by the end of the year. Um, and then obviously with my sport, I am part of the high performance program at Cardiff. So you apply when you first come to university and I've just actually sent my application off today for this year. And if you're successful, you can get 
loads of benefits, including free facilities like gym, tennis courts, etc., free kit, nutrition support, um, free physio, and if you're lucky to get, you know, some financial support and it's been fantastic. People often kind of say that Cardiff University isn't, you know, the main sport hub in Cardiff because obviously you've got Cardiff Met, but they're really upping their game and I've had so much support from this year and it's been fantastic. So if anyone's sporty, honestly, Cardiff is fab. <laughs> um, I think next slide then, please. So just a few final tips that I kind of wanted to say. Um, things that I've learned and I think is really important to know. I know it's very cliche, but you will know where to go to university and it's important to go with your gut. People always say it, but honestly, you'll get to a point where things will just click. I remember when I came to Cardiff, each time I just got more and more excited about coming here and I could see myself studying here and like I really loved the course. You know, into the places, and I was like, "Oh, I enjoy." You can, I couldn't see myself living here, and don't panic if it doesn't happen straight away. Um, it will click, and yeah, go with your gut. You will know what to do. Another thing, which I think is very important, especially as we're growing up in a world of social media, is don't take a photo you see with a pinch of salt. It is a microsecond of a day, and it is so normal to struggle and have hard times at university. Um. I think it's important to try and break the stigma around this because social media can give people, you know, feel they're missing out, FOMO, as you guys might know what that means. Um, so I think it's really important to don't let it consume you and to, you know, live your life in university, use nothing to share on social media, don't let what you see on someone else's story influence you or make you how you feel. But then on, a good thing of social media is I really like using YouTube to find out more Real life experiences of current students. I really helped me looking online for engineering students, civil engineering students in the UK, Cardiff University students, and just seeing what their day to day lives are actually like. Because open days in university will obviously give you almost like a rose tinted view of everything. But I think it's important to understand what actual students are feeling and what, what their day to day activities are like. So, um, I've actually got my own YouTube channel, which I started about a year ago to help other students because I really wanted them to. Because I know when I applied, I didn't have people out. I didn't have um, videos out there for me in Cardiff or with engineering. So I know that if any video can help even one or two people, it will really help. So I've also put my email on the slide. Please, please, please get in touch. Um, oh. <laughs> If you guys ask any questions, even if it's really small and silly, um, if I can help anybody with the smallest thing, it would really mean a lot. So I think that's it, really. Please reach out if you guys are obviously um, any questions, big or small, because I know how scary it can be trying to work out what, what you want to do in university. I think so. Yeah, that's it from me. <laughs> I will put the last slide up because I managed to lose it. So um, when I went to slideshow, it's disappearing. So um, you can see Grace's email there, gracemorgan141 at gmail.com. And Grace will encourage people to subscribe because how great to find out what it's like studying at uni. Okay, <laughs> we love YouTube channels and I bet you've probably got more subscribers than me already, Grace. So I'm, uh, I can imagine that, I can imagine that. Thank you so much. Now. This is a great opportunity, everyone. If you've got any questions for Grace, all right, and it might be anything about engineering, about the different subjects that Grace, you might want to know the subjects Grace studied, um, you know, edit in year 12 and then in year 13, and what, you know, it could be stuff like that. It could be questions you might have about engineering in, in detail. It could be questions about, um, you know, the different other types of engineering and, and, and all the sort of content of the courses. It could be anything. So I'm going to kick it off here and I'm going to say in terms of your the engineering that you chose, civil engineering, which of the yeah. subjects you studied at A level? So as I remember, it was chemistry, biology and geography. Yeah. And of course, the Welsh bar. What I was chemistry? Oh, I did chemistry, maths and geography. I didn't do biology. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, I forgot. That's it. And that's my that's yeah. getting old. Right. So chemistry, <laughs> maths, geography. Yeah. Which of those subjects do you find the most useful 
in terms of the engineering course that you're doing? Um, definitely maths. Um, a lot of first year maths is kind of A level for maths. Um, also, I didn't study A level for maths to know, but people in my course said it's very similar. Um, but there's aspects in geography which I've learned, that, which I've used this year in my um, kind of like soils and geomechanics module. If I took physics, it would have been helpful at the beginning of the year because obviously I had to kind of re-understand principles that people, some people already knew. But for me, definitely maths at the moment. <laughs> so, um, so Hill has asked a question, right? Okay, he's asked you what sort of grades specifically would you know did you get, and so what GCSEs did you choose? So, in terms of he's asked you what sort of GCSEs did you do as options? Yeah, because um, yeah. so Hill's in your at the moment, right? And what sort of grades would you need to do? I imagine he's asking what sort of grades would you need to go on and do an engineering course at Cardiff? Okay, so I took PE, Geography and Music as my three choices for GCSE. Love them all. Um, and I think at GCSE level, as long as you have, obviously, math, sciences, English, you're fine. You know, pick what you want to pick and pick something you enjoy. Um, for my offers, I think Cardiff was AAB either three A's or AAB, I applied for the undergrad master's. So um, my course is called an MEng, which is the master's in engineering. However, you can apply for a BEng, which is the bachelor in engineering. And the BEng is lower grades. And I've got lots of friends who are on that and then can go the way up to the master's programme. But based on my A-levels, I would I personally chose to kind of go for the MEng and kind of get on the course straight away. Um, in terms of like other universities I applied for, I think I had two of them were three A's. I think Brunel was an A and two B's. So read really varies in universities. Um, definitely do your research and have a look around. Different unions would have different requirements and different grades. I think all of mine wanted maths. So I was lucky I had maths. Um, I think it was in maths and maybe another science. So also chemistry worked for me. But yeah, I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know. Well, there's a couple of things I would pick up on that. Grace um, mentioned about chemistry. Chemistry is really useful in the sense that um, you, you learn about the different materials or whatever, which is obviously going to really help you for engineering and stuff like that. Um, maths is fundamental if you want to study engineering. If you don't have A-level maths, right, you can go on and do engineering, but you would normally have to do a foundation year. Yeah. Now, for people that don't know, a foundation year is where you do an extra year and you do this foundation year and certain unis will offer that and then they sort of teach you the math skills that you would need to go on and do it. So if you haven't done A-level maths, it's normally a foundation year that you would do and then you would go straight into your degree. So you can do it without, but A-level maths is essential. OK, sometimes, um, you know, a university might ask for physics as well, but nearly always it's A-level maths, right, to do engineering. That's the, the key there. Um, the other thing that I'll come to Hannah's question a minute. The other thing that Grace did, she's mentioned some really good things here. Swansea University offer fantastic summer schools. This year, the summer schools were online. They are absolutely free and they covered so many different subjects. Now, that really helps you find out if you're a year 12 student, you do your summer school. It really helps you find out whether a particular subject is right for you. All right. And even if you don't enjoy the summer school, that's a good experience because you understand that maybe that subject is not right for you at university. And there are lots of master classes um, and summer schools and webinars that you can attend for if you're interested in STEM. STEM is very fortunate. Science, technology, engineering, maths. There is so much out there because there's so much funding by universities, whatever. They will run these things. And if you and females that are looking at STEM, because we have a shortage of female scientists and engineers, there will even be more programs to encourage you. So that's something worth doing. Now I've got, there's another question here. Hannah's asked a really good question. She's asked, what is the mental health support and the pastoral support like at Cardiff Uni? Um, to my knowledge, it's, it's fantastic. Obviously during COVID, it's been extremely difficult for many people. And when I moved into residences last year, we were getting frequent emails about people we could reach out to and talk to if we needed them. On 
kind of like the software we use as a university is called the Student Intranet, and on there they have a massive section on wellbeing and support. Um, I know you can get counselling and attend sessions, and they always encourage us, you know, to speak out and talk to people if we need help. So I hope that answers your question. I haven't done extensive research on it myself, but I know where to go if I need it, if that makes sense. So you you never have to seek it out. It's always kind of there for you to kind of take, if that makes sense. And Hannah, they've got, this is a, that was a, such a good question. Universities will have something called student support services. OK, yeah. and they will normally be right next to the student union. They're very visible and and those and the people are absolutely fantastic. All universities it's it's key and they will help you if you're anxious or you're worried about anything, but they'll also help you if, for example, you have a special educational need and they want you to engage with them. So if, for example, you might have um, you might be dyslexic or then you might have um, a special educational need. It's really important that you tell the university because they want to help you. They have lots of funding. If you are somebody who's a carer, yeah, or for, for somebody else, there is so much support available to you. OK, so it's essential that you sort of check out the student support services because the, the universities all have excellent support services and it's their job to help you and support you. Kevin's asked a really good question. He's put. Oh, well, um, I'm just going to jump in quickly and just say no, that. No, uh, that's fine. I forgot to say. So, when you join Carve University, um, a new a system they have is called the Student Mentor Scheme. So, I was assigned a year three student who was doing my course. To, to be honest, like my buddy in a way during first year. There were 10 of us in the group and they kind of talked us through, you know, living at Cardiff, some helpful things about our course. It's also kind of like our first point of contact if we, you know, needed some help or was worried. Remember, I messaged mine quite a lot at the beginning to understand a bit more about my course and she was able to signpost me to different places and people I could talk to if I needed. So that's one really good thing about Carve University they have. And I loved it so much last year. I actually signed up this year to be student mentor for first years as well because I know how much it helped me. So I want to help other people as well. <laughs> Fab. Yeah, absolutely. And lots of universities are, are, are doing this. It's a very popular to have. We had Charlotte last week um, talking about her course and she was saying that at Edinburgh they have, you have um, students who are like maybe in year three and you're in year one and they're like your, they, they call them like their parents, it's like a parenting scheme. They match yeah, you yeah, up. Yeah. With people you that. Can. So that was great. Now, um, Kevin has asked, um, He's put great talk about your experience of studying civil engineering. Were there any courses or workshops you did during sixth form that you felt that made you stand out or benefit you greatly as a candidate for Cardiff? Um, so I talked about my work experience in the summer and obviously I attended the summer school. So that was all kind of within the summer of year 12 going into year 13. I attended the Loughborough STEM day and I think I went to one or two webinars or like sessions that were put on um in terms of anything else engineering wise probably not but I was I had a big part in extra extracurricular activities in school I was part of the choir orchestra big um part of, like the sport teams so I think having those things obviously away from engineering as well just really helps boost you and almost show you off to when you're applying so I think you want to have some experience because obviously you want to kind of know what, what you're going into university but anything you know if you're volunteering a part-time job all things like that can relate to being an engineer and attributes of a good engineer so don't panic if you can't find anything um but there's so much stuff out there I know the Institute of Civil Engineers is We've, we've just lost the website, loads of webinars, and what do you hear up to? <laughs> Sorry, it just broke up a minute where you said, I think you said the Institute of Civil Engineering, and then you sort of dipped out, the Wi Fi dipped out okay, in terms of that. And they have a website, Grace, so you can look, they have resources there. Yeah, there's loads and loads of resources from obviously you guys in school, for me in university, and then obviously postgrad so there's a massive range there and it's really um i really recommend them a look <laughs> yeah absolutely and look one of the things that grace picked up on grace was a student that obviously got involved in lots of things and it does prepare you for yeah. uni brilliantly because 
when I went to uni, I was like in total awe of the number of different opportunities available. Universities have clubs and societies, yeah, for every possible hobby. And it's about sort of exploring the different sorts of hobbies and interests and, and taking part. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for students who are you know, taking part because university is so much more than just the course that you're doing. OK, you have opportunities in sport and music and you know, and, you know, all sorts of opportunities. And it's part of being part of that union, making friends and fitting in and actually enjoying your experience. OK, so um, if and also you've got to be able to manage your time because, you know, suddenly yeah. you get to play a lot, go to lots of different societies and, and various things and you have your studies as well. So if you can demonstrate that you can take part in things in school or outside of school in a personal statement, you're showing the university that when you come to university, you will be able to manage your studies alongside these are great opportunities that the university will offer. OK, because everyone goes, we joke about it, but everyone goes crazy sometimes when they when they have a, um, a society's fair and joins everything in the first week normally and then thinks, right, how am I going to manage my time? So, you know, that's it's good experience in school if you get involved with things and and you know obviously covid restrictions are lifting a little bit now and it does allow you to volunteer and get involved in things and um this is great with your cv great for that so we've got some more questions okay so mm -hmm. sam has asked what's the best thing and the worst thing about studying engineering um, I think it varies for each person to person i love it because it's it is varied and it's not always I'm just doing maths or I'm just doing an essay. It's one afternoon I'll be in a lab, you know, doing an experiment. Next minute I'll be looking, um, you know, designing. I remember this uh, last year I had to go around Cardiff and sketch those buildings in town. Just so much fun. Um, I think it's just I, I love I love the like you know the variations and how broad it is. It can be overwhelming the broadness in a way, but yeah, it really helps build like a big pocket of skills. The worst thing, obviously it depends, but it's a very, very heavy course. Um, I think they advertise like 40 hours a week, obviously like overall with like contact and your own training and not training own work. And But all engineering is the same. So it's not like I can go, oh, I'm going to opt out and try a different engineering discipline, which can be a bit easier. Um, they're all very, it's very heavy. And I remember when I was applying, I was like oh it won't be that bad and I'm not trying to scare you but if you can you know work consistently during sixth form and be able to stay on top of the work and manage everything else kind of juggles with life in a way I think you'll be okay but it's just about being prepared if that makes sense but um yeah it varies from person to person um obviously I enjoy maths so in a way it's like you know yeah <laughs> one of the things i'll add to that is one of the things that you find is and we've had a lot and lots of we'll have lots of guest speakers talking about humanities and various things is that science-based courses tend to have quite a lot of hours contact time in terms of lectures and workshops and practical sessions okay and if you do more some some humanities courses not all right might have will have may have less contact time but it, you're required to do they give you time like study periods or whatever, you know, to do essays and assignments because you might have more essays and stuff like that. So it varies and you have to think what's right for you. Now, I've had some students who have gone off and do humanities courses and they've loved the freedom and the fact that they've got more time sort of working independently on their assignments and less contact time. Others have found it, you know, thinking, well, actually, I prefer the more structure, um, but it, it does vary. OK, it does vary in terms of the subject you're doing. OK, and also the university. But general rules, science courses, STEM courses tend to have more contact time because of the practical element to their courses. Right. Eugene um, is in year 11. He's asked a really good question. He's put, how important are the GCSE grades when applying for an engineering degree at a Russell Group Uni? Um, I know A-levels are very important, but I've never heard anything about GCSE grades. So I'll let Grace do this because she can answer it brilliantly, I know. Um, GCSEs, they don't like look at those too heavily. You obviously you need the basic, you know, the minimum requirements, your 5A star to C's, including maths, English and science. But in terms of that, nothing I'm aware of is... 
Oops, they're testing it. They've decided to test the firearms <laughs> in our webinar. There we go. Um, um, yeah, I hope that kind of helps if you know you're a bit worried now. But um, no, A lab is kind of the important one. But yeah, as long as you have like the the minimum required grades, obviously aim for the stars, do as best as you can, but don't worry about if your GCSEs will obviously um, Im impact you for your uh, degree because it levels is what's important. Yeah, absolutely. What I'd say, Eugene, is this, okay? If you get, having really good GCSE grades may open up opportunities, yeah, in terms of taster courses and master classes and stuff that um, will, you know, that might depend on certain grades. Great. Right. There we are. I'm gonna have, sorry, Grace. I'm gonna let you just talk in a minute. I'm just gonna speak to our state team. That's fine. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll answer the next question. Uh, do you think that someone that has a specific engineering field in mind should skip straight to the M eng, or do you think it'd be helpful for future employment to do a general B eng, like mechanical, for example, and specify in the masters? So I think it really depends because you can do very specific master's degrees in different places. So I also apply for the MEng because long term to become a chartered engineer, which is kind of like the step to become like a professional, you need to have studied like a master's degree in university in obviously the, in the engineering type that you kind of want to get chartered in. So because my level grades were like, I, I knew I was going to be OK, I applied for the MEng because when you're in university to get to go from the BN to the MN, you have to get, I think, an average of 60 percent overall in years two and year three to be able to go on to the master's course. But if you're on the program from when you kind of enter, you're kind of like guaranteed to stay on unless obviously your um, results are very, very low. So I would always recommend if you have the grades to kind of apply for the MN of your course because you can drop it. There are loads of options throughout the year and they frequently remind you that you can drop down if you wanted to. But obviously getting onto it, in my opinion, is harder than being able to drop down. So Liam, you could you, you could always apply for, for instance, an M engine mechanical engineering, decide you don't want that, just do the B eng, and then after that, pick a more specific area within mechanical engineering, for instance, to do your master's in. Um, I hope that helps. Um, yeah. <laughs> we've, got about, we've got about 10 minutes before they, they test the fire alarm again. So um, I've managed to delay it a bit. So this is what happens with live webinars. Harry's asked a good question, right? Harry, um, do you have to live at university or can you live at home or just attend uni on a day-to-day -day basis? You can 100% live at home and lots of people will do that, right? Loads of people will do that, okay? And the way it works is that you apply for um, grants, okay, when you go to university, you have grants and grants are good because you don't have to pay them back, okay. You can also have, you have loans as well, which you do pay back, but it's the most friendliest loan that you can have because um, you only pay it back if you earn a certain amount of money, okay, and I think it's something like, I can't off the top of my head, 21,000, something like that, and if you earn less than that, you don't pay anything back at all, and it, it's uh, and if, for example, that you didn't, you sort of lost your job or something happened, um, it would freeze and you wouldn't have to pay it back until you earned more than 21,000 again. So it's a very friendly thing. Now, if you live at home, you um, you you will obviously won't need as much loans and grants available because you haven't got that expensive accommodation. But there is still lots of financial support as well. So lots of people will live at home and go to university so loads of people do that okay um kevin is asking do you think studying a stem based subject such as engineering puts you to an advantage in other courses since engineering is a maths heavy do you think studying has opened more opportunities if you didn't want to continue with engineering um to my knowledge it's, it's because it's a um like a doctor, you know, you you study medicine to become a doctor. Ninety percent of the time, people will choose engineering to become an engineer. But I have heard of people who, you know, who don't, you know, it's not they do the degree and it's not for them, and they will go into the places. There are lots of transferable skills. I will say that because obviously, you know, you are doing labs, you are obviously maths, but you're also um, 
writing reports, doing stuff on computers, design. So it's very broad and you build lots of skills, which are obviously very transferable. So I think if you were to be seen to have also like an engineering degree, people would know in a way what it takes to get there and like the work ethic and how hard the course is. Um, I totally agree with that, Grace. I mean, if you do a science <laughs> degree, you're gonna you are gonna pick up loads of transferable skills, right? And I and I and obviously I did my degree quite a long time ago because I am slightly older than Grace. All right, and most of my friends who did PhDs and degrees, they 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 they're working a whole range of jobs. Okay, yeah, and lots of them are working in non-science jobs, but the skills that they develop have really helped them. And it's the same, you know, that with degree courses, it's the skills that you develop during your degree course that make you employable. And lots of big companies will advertise opportunities for graduates, and they will not be specific to a subject very often. They will have graduate programs. So big companies like IBM and Lloyds Bank and, Ver, you know, um, Deloitte and all, all these sort of companies will have graduate opportunities for people who, have completed a degree in a subject and they and they know they will have developed lots of skills that make them very employable. So you need to pick a subject for uni that you love and enjoy. That's yeah. the whole point about it. OK, I, to add to that. Um, ironically, I was looking at um, CUC, looking at like placement jobs now next year and I was looking on a website and there was loads of different um, placement options and like graduate options. Uh, jobs are in options um for engineering and completely and um, you know completely unrelated courses that said like open to engineering students or open to engineering graduates even though it's like maths based or kind of like more of like an office job so it you, the reason if you you know if you have the chance to look um places are open because they know obviously the transferable skills and the maths and what you will learn in engineering is you know is used everywhere if that makes sense Brilliant. OK, I'm conscious of time. All right. And um, I want to beat the buzzer. Is there any more questions for Grace? Because Grace's email is on there anyway. And Grace, is, she said she's happy for you to email her. And if you've got any questions about engineering or any of this, come and see me. Um, Grace, that was a fantastic talk. Really, really good. And we'll encourage everyone to follow your YouTube channel because how great to learn about what it's like to study at uni. OK, Grace is very modest, but she's combining uni with international athletics as well. So that takes some doing. Um, great ambassador, Grace Verrada, great ambassador for Cardiff Uni. Um, thank you so much for that talk. It was brilliant. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, please email or get to Dr. Rowe and then he can obviously forward it to me if you needed. But um, yeah, hopefully coming to see everyone soon. <laughs> That was brilliant. And hopefully next time, Grace, you'll be able to come in and we'll be able to do yeah. this face to face. But thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. That was a fantastic um, talk. Um, email me if you have any questions and um, we'll end the webinar there. And Grace, thank you. Keep in touch, Grace. And, um, okay. I, and um, you know, go with the athletics. Yeah, um, keep going. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, guys. No worries. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> bye, everyone.